Welcome. Thanks for joining the Linda Mood Bell for Schools Leaders in Literacy webinar. Um, my name is Dave Kivita, and I am the Director of Development for Linda Mood Bell for Schools. I'm excited today to be hosting our teacher panel of folks from around the country who are working with um, some of the most at-risk students in school. Um, and are, we'll be talking about some of the challenges that they've faced working in this new environment, whether it's virtual or it's sort of hybrid or in person. Um, we'll also be talking about how they've overcome some of those challenges. Um, and we'll also talk about some positives that they'll be taking away um, from having gone through this experience. Um, all of the teachers that we're talking with today have been trained in at least one Linda Mood Bell program. So whether that was Seeing Stars or Visualizing and Verbalizing or the LIPS program, or in some cases, the Talkies program. Um, and while they'll be sharing some about that program, our hope is obviously that well, they'll be sharing even more about what their experiences teaching have been like um, so that we all find some value and some, some good knowledge that we can take away from this discussion today. Um, so I want to start by having our teachers introduce themselves. Um, and because you're top left in my screen, at least, Melissa, um, would you like to go, go first? Sure. So my name is Melissa Rosenberg. Um, I'm a speech language pathologist uh, for Norwalk Public Schools. Um, I'm currently in an elementary school. And um, right now I'm seeing, we're back at school and I'm seeing some students in person, but I'm still primarily seeing my students virtually. Great. And when you say you're seeing them virtually, are they at home or, or is it virtual? Some are at home and some are at school within their classrooms. Got it. Got it. Great. Um, Emily, how about you? Hi, how are you? I'm Emily Santa Marina. I am a speech and language pathologist in the Rockville Center School District in New York. Um, I have been back at work since September, um, seeing students both in person and virtually, as well as blended, where I have some students in the classroom and some students at home as well at the same time. So it's been a very interesting and new experience. And um, yeah. Sounds like I can't wait to hear more about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Maggie, how about yourself? So I work in Baltimore County Public Schools in Maryland. I work in elementary school as a special education inclusion teacher for fourth and fifth grade students. And we are all virtual currently. Um, staff do have the option of going to the building to teach virtually, um, but I typically teach from my laundry room where I am now. Um, and yeah, so all my students are included in general education. Um, and then I hop into their Google Meet room to kind of pull them out and say, come to my Google Meet and they join me in the classroom. Got it, got it, that's great. All right, and then Valerie, how about yourself? My name is Valerie Hopp, and I'm a special day class teacher for fourth and fifth graders. Um, I'm working in the Monterey Peninsula a Unified School District, and we are virtual. Um, five days a week for my students. Great, mm -hmm. great. Um, awesome, thank you all for introducing yourselves. That was perfect. Um, so the next thing I wanted to move to was a little bit of talking about just what some of the challenges are that, that you've come across. And, and, you know, I think we can all think back to last spring, which was, was relatively chaotic. Um, you know, so maybe you're thinking about what were some of the challenges last spring that you came to. Um, but we also have had some time to plan as we came into this school year. Um, and so some of that might have changed, but what are some of the challenges and obstacles that you're still facing um, as, we, as we step into this new school year? Um, so if we want to, um, maybe we'll mix it up and we'll go in a slightly different order. Um, Maggie, how about yourself? If you wanna talk a little bit about what some of the challenges are that you faced in Baltimore County. Yeah. Um... I think overall, Baltimore County um, did a really good job at getting something together to send home with students on that last day of school. It was not a be all end all, and I think anyone from the county would say that, um, but there was something. Um, after two weeks, we started doing virtual instruction. Um, 
it was a lot less rigor rigorous than what we're doing now. I think the hardest part was kind of figuring out what our expectations were um, and like helping um, people with different technology items. Our school mm -hmm. district was already one-to-one. -one, um, so students were very familiar with devices um, and many had access to a device. Um, elementary school students' devices ended up being mailed to their houses um, from their schools. But overall, I feel like the hardest part was becoming a tech support overnight, um, which I'm happy to do. Um, but it's definitely been tricky to like play tech support while teaching children how to read or do math or whatever else we're working on. Um, and then it's also the connection. Like that to me is the hardest part. Um, I miss my kids. I saw some of my now sixth graders, so they're in middle school, not at my school anymore. Um, when they came with their younger siblings to do our material pickup at the beginning of the year, and I screamed when I saw some of them because I was so excited um, to see them. I saw some kids. I thought they were about to jump out of their cars. I was like, dude, you got to stay in your car, but I love you. Like, I'm so happy to see your face. Um, so it really does make me happy to be able to see them virtually. Um, yeah. But I definitely... And I think we, that's the awesome. Thank you, Maggie. And I think we ran into a little bit of, of technical, technical challenge there for a second, too, as you froze up for just a second. Um, that's, that's the reality we're operating in, right? Um, yeah, Melissa, how about yourself? What, what kind of challenges did you come across? Sure. So I definitely experienced similar challenges to Maggie. Um, I think for me, it was just such an unexpected and sudden change. Um, and it was so abrupt. And it was kind of during like a scary time. Um, so that was like my biggest challenge when we first started and just, you know, all of the coordinating that distance learning required. Um, so I think that was really, you know, tough for me and my students and my families. And just another challenge that um, I think I still face is just it's harder to engage students and get them to participate over um, you know the computer so that's something I think that I still continue to struggle with yeah yeah mm -hmm. awesome awesome um, and, and Valerie how about how about you in Monterey well um, I think our district has done a very a, 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 an excellent job of um, you know training our um, teachers but also you know getting as many resources for us as possible and frankly they were expensive and uh to do that and they've done a lovely job of that but again we all have to become experts at it and we have to help our kids and their families use it and that took quite a bit i still have students who don't have good internet connections and so they're constantly falling off or they can't join me or, you know, I can't understand them, they're getting stuck. So that can be a real frustration when you're trying to teach, especially if, you know, the reading portion or something, because you need to be able to hear them and, um, and they need to hear you. But um, there's ways around it a little bit. And also, I think the distractions at home, my students tend to be pretty distractible already. And um, if the dog's coming through the room, um, the little brother or whatever it is, they are very distracted. And we spend a, a fair amount of time trying to get them back into um, <laughs> what they're supposed to be doing. And then just motivating. I agree that with Melissa, that it's hard to motivate them and sustain their focus um, and to do their best when it's online. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I know with my own kids that, that um, distractibility is a big one, especially when they're supposed to be navigating between different um, programs. Um, mm -hmm. And sure enough, they get distracted either by the teacher's instructions or what another kid is doing or just by, by the nature of they went to the wrong place and they get mm -hmm. off on that one. Um, Emily, how about yourself? Um, so... As everyone has said, it's been it's been an adventure. Um, we um, the speech language pathologists in the district kind of got right to it. We we set up Google Classrooms with activities that our students could do at home. Um, sent out the links and invited the parents and the students to those classrooms so they could get started and do some carryover at home. And then we kind of hopped right in. I did find. Um, 
you know, some challenge with the operating systems like Google Meet versus Zoom and, and which one to use. And so the, it was all a learning curve on the technology component. And just um, like everyone said, the motivation, I actually had some Linda Mood Bell coaching during um, that period. And they gave me some great resources, some some online motivating tools. They had like, there's a wheel that's a random name picker and I would put like, um, you know, things that they could work for in there and then we'd spin the wheel just to make it a little bit more interactive and engaging because it's really hard to be interactive, um, yeah. you know, especially tactilely. Like I feel like the students really just need that extra component. They don't just need talk they need the visual support they need the tactile support of everything and so i thought that was um a tricky tricky uh road to navigate for us but but we're we're doing it and and i'm i'm so proud of all of us and all of the students you know navigating these waters and yeah. i i think we're doing great awesome awesome um so I appreciate everybody sharing some of the different challenges. There was a lot of overlap there, um, but also some, some different pieces that you pointed out a lot. Um, Melissa, you, you were mentioning trying to figure out how to motivate students was really difficult. Was there anything um, that you kind of landed on? I know that Emily was talking about um, some tools that she used to try to motivate kids and keep them engaged. Was there anything that you ended up um, using that you found particularly useful? Yeah, so I actually started um, the Linda Mood Bell coaching this summer, um, and my coach really helped me. She also shared um, some of those tools with me, so those have been really helpful, um, whether it was reward charts or kind of just making a tally for every time they participated, and then um, it kind of gives them a visual, like, of how much they participated, and then they can earn something, so that's been really helpful, and I've also just found um, really diving into the kids' interests um, has really, really been helpful, especially during this time. Great. Great. Awesome. Maggie, how about um, some of the challenges you came, you, you mentioned specifically figuring out expectations. Um, yeah. So that was a um, really good one. It's definitely been interesting to figure out how to best support students in the virtual environment and kind of figure out how you're going to interact with them, especially in the world of inclusion, where you are possibly pushing into a classroom and being another teacher or pulling students out um, and they might not be available for some of the in-class instruction. Um, I've already, I'm already on schedule number two of the year and it's been a month, um, but definitely being flexible and meeting with people where they're at um, and when is available for them. Um, has definitely been a thing. I also was working with a Linda Moon Bell coach um, back when we started. Um, and we had been working previously when you guys were on my computer and we were in a classroom and then we were all on a computer. Um, so that, that I found very funny. Um, and so it was kind of nice to have that almost like normalcy point where it's like, okay, we're going to have a another fun guest today that's going to do reading and math with us. Um, and my students enjoy that um, and are always very welcoming. I wanted to share um, what I've been kind of doing with engagement, though, um, because I had that same, how can I engage people? How can I figure out what kids need so that they can be ready to learn? Um, and I ended up doing the same thing I do in my classroom. I just brought it home with me. Um, I use punch cards. I can't show you them because they have student names. Um, but it's just a piece of a sentence script. Got my good old fashioned hole puncher. Um, and they earn a certain number of punches and then they can earn a prize. Um, we did spend some time at the beginning of the year as different student groups figuring out what prizes um, would they would be excited for. But um, it's definitely going really well. And it's, I'm excited because it's something that I know works for my kids. It's that tactile piece that they can see. Um, but for me, I wanted them to be able to see it when they wanted to see it and as quick as possible and not have to like click 6 million things. So. Nice. That's yeah. great. Thank you for sharing that, Maggie. I appreciate it. 
Um, Valerie, how come uh, some of the challenges you were talking particularly about distractibility um, and kind of sustained focus mm -hmm. with your students? Well, first of all, um, my children that I work with are already distractible. And so we knew that would be a problem because it's often a problem. But, um, you know, we do remind the kids to focus. Um, but the other thing is if they have an item or if it's the dog or if it's the whatever it is that we ask them to put away, I will um, say, let's schedule a time that you can share that with all of us. And then maybe, you know, thinking maybe that will help them get some of that out. And um, also communicate with parents, so important. And I will say that I have really gotten a lot closer to the parents because this year, um, because I'm constantly calling them or I'm texting them or whatever I need to do to, to negotiate the, the, all that's going on. And um, one of the things I, you know, is things like, no TV, please. I, you know, we may have talked about it, but before, but they don't remember. No TV, please. A quiet room, if possible. I've got to share with you. I know you are in your laundry room. I actually had a little boy show up in his bathroom, sitting on on the toilet seat, teaching. Take you know, do, because that was the only quiet place he could find. And so, anyway, I thought that was funny. You may want to <laughs> take that out. Anyway, um, so our kids, you know, they have, they're often living in very close quarters where we live. Housing is very expensive and people are often, a lot of people in one, one small area. And so having a quiet place is um, a challenge for a lot of our kids. And if they have other children in the house also doing um, online teaching, online teaching and learning, they just isn't that many quiet places. And so he told me, Miss Top, I got to, um, everybody's out there making noise. It's the only quiet place I can find. I said, that's great. I appreciate your, <laughs> what you're doing. I said, you're, keep it up, you know. And um, the other thing about it is um, I also use, uh, for Linda Mugel, I use the gems that are given. And they get also the punches. And I'm interested in hearing, Maggie, what, how you deliver the um, prizes because I used to do that within my class, but now I've talked to all the parents and I've asked them to be the reward givers, but I encourage them not to just buy something for them, but to maybe have a family time where you can have the child who's won the prize come up with um, maybe choose a movie and then they can have movie with popcorn, Think, take a hike, go on a picnic. So it becomes a family happy time as well. And so the parents seem open to that and the kids are excited. So we'll see how that goes. Great. That's great. Maggie, did you have any, um, how have you gotten prizes out to the kids? So I have moved completely away from physical prizes. Um, I've done things like students cannot watch a YouTube video on their device, but teachers do have access to YouTube. So they can let me know a school appropriate YouTube video that they can watch. We'll watch like two minutes at the end of a lesson. Um, street, they can choose a go noodle. Um, lunch bunch is always a favorite. Um, drawing on Jamboard, um, which is a really amazing tool, especially if you're doing things that you want to have a manipulative, I think. Um, what else have we been doing? Break pass. Um, oh, class DJ, they could choose a song to play at the beginning or end of class. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, that's a great idea. Those are all good. That's a great idea. Yeah. They're fun. And they chose them, so they like them. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, Emily, you were talking about um, in the same group with some of the kids in person and some of them online at the same time. What's that been like, and how have you tried to, you know, meet? I, um, I haven't quite <laughs> mastered that, that yet. <laughs> um, it involves um, kind of projecting things on my smart board and walking around with a laptop <laughs> or an iPad and kind of, you know, um, I think it's, it's really important, at least for speech and language therapy, they need to see me. They need to see my face. I need to see their face. We need to have that open line of communication with each other and so you know it's I have not perfected it yet I I, I have not um it's it's a learning curve still for me right now um 
but you know, and and then on on top of that, I was going to say, just kind of listening to everyone else, that there's a whole other host of of issues. You know, um, I also work on, you know, not just on. I'm in a high school setting, so not just students who are in inclusion, but I also have students that are on the autism spectrum, Down syndrome, intellectual disabilities, multiple disabilities, and so I've had to rely a lot on. Um, when they're home, a lot on the parents to help me to engage them because especially the students um, on on that level are require a lot of prompting and tactile prompting and kind of you know keeping them in a appropriate area so that I can get some attention out of them. So it's it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle, but um, I'm I'm just. I don't know if I'm in the minority, but I've been so happy to have most of my students back in person. Um, it's been wonderful. It's been just a little touch of normalcy that I think we kind of all needed. So I'm fingers crossed that it'll stay. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, all right, so I wanted to talk uh, a little bit, and thank you all for sharing those, um, those uh, ways that you've overcome things. Um, maybe we could talk for just a minute and Melissa will bounce back to you about some um, positives that you've taken from this entire experience that maybe will change how you're going to teach from now on uh, that was different than what you were doing before. Sure. So I think I'm just so surprised about how flexible I can be in my teaching. Like I never knew I could just flip everything around like a 360 like that. And so I think it's just kind of, you know, cool now that I can, you know, provide therapy, you know, over the computer with more confidence, because it's definitely, you know, a good tool, both for myself and my students to have in like, a world that seems to be, you know, forever changing. Um, I think another thing is just like, I think Emily had mentioned, I've gotten to connect with my families and get to know them so much more. And, kind of just provide them with the strategies that have really been um, working for their, you know, kids in school. So just kind of, you know, continuing to keep that open line of communication, because I feel like that's really, really helped. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Um, I've definitely noticed it with my kids, too, a lot more communication with teachers, which I think is, is um, I'm hoping is something that will continue. Mm -hmm. um, Valerie, how about how about you? So positives, I, I right now, our SPED department is um, telling us, and I agree with them, that we'll pretty much do all, even when we go back, we'll be doing virtual meetings with parents. That's going to be helpful for us. So um, another one is, I agree with Melissa, I am so much closer and understand, I, I believe, more where my kids are coming from and what their situations are. Um, they are struggling, some of them, um, emotionally, but it's good to know that too. And um, so I'm in contact with parents and even if they need counseling, I can help them with that. But I feel that I'm just knowing your students better um, it's, and their families is probably the most important thing. And I frankly have just always been a little shy about doing that. But now I realize the parents really do want to know more and they do want to be close. And, and uh, so I'm becoming, I feel like a little more of a sense of team a team all of us together and that really has been wonderful um also i have become as melissa probably i would say as well as i'm becoming a whole lot better technologically and i want to continue that with my kids because i feel that they need to be more um savvy that way as well and and one of the big things one of the things that we're doing is instead of doing our handwriting which i always used to do we, we're doing typing right now uh, that's one of the things we always do and I, I'm excited to see the kids doing that and they enjoy it and so the writing is actually uh, doing writing online has been kind of it's a challenge but it's um it's a positive thing like the kids seem to be in, engaged and enjoying it because it is tech -tech. so that's great so there's a lot nice. of positives yeah that's great thank you mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing that Valerie um, Maggie how about for you um I agree there is so many positives in that biggest one is the connections with our students' home lives. Um, I already had a good connection with a lot of the families, um, like going to different gymnastics events or concerts outside of school. Um, but 
now it's it's cool like I learned that one of my students has a hamster and one of them has a pool in their backyard and there's all these different parts of their lives um that are going on um, that I really feel privileged to kind of be able to sneak a peek into and that they're sharing that with me um I do have the advantage that I work with students typically for more than one year so I've had my fifth graders for three years now um and most of them. And so I was, that's a really great advantage. So we can kind of hop right into learning and they, they know what to expect from me. I know what to expect from them. Um, and that feels really good. Um, learning new kids is hard. And we also um, switched over to kind of a resource room model this year. Um, instead of having just case managers for a certain grade and they just take care of those grades um, and so that's been a new adventure that we've been diving into and we kind of said, should we wait until we're back in person? And I was like, no, like this is where we're at. We think this is going to be good for kids. So we might as well start doing it now. Um, even if it's going to be hard. And so that's been really interesting. Um, I think overall, just like that push for creativity and learning about kids in a different way. Um, I learned yeah. that one of my students loves musicals and I wouldn't have probably figured that out until she started posting pictures of jam. She started adding all these musical um, playbills onto her jam board that she could play on. I was like, Oh, do you like musicals? And she was like, yeah, I love musicals. It's like, great. Me too. Let's talk about that. Like, let's use that. <laughs> um, and so, but I, I don't know if I would have gotten that in the classroom where she's a little shyer. Um, there's also that, constant communication that students are have available to them. Um, the learning management system we use allows us to message anyone in our county. And so students can message me and say, hi, I forgot what time we have group today. Let me know. And I can message them back right away. But I can also message um, or students that I used to have previously have messaged me this year um, one of them sent me a video telling me all about her middle school schedule and showing her me her uniform. I might have shed a few tears. It's okay. Um, but it's really cool to keep that communication and have the students be able to advocate for themselves. Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Emily, how about how about yourself for some positives? Um, so some positives, again, the, the family interaction and just the parents seeing what we're actually doing so that it can be carried over at home and they know what to do. You know, they know the language, they know. And even I did a lot of parent coaching through this all of like, no, wait, don't give them the answer, you know, give them some clues, do this, do that. And also, um, one of the best things I think that came out especially for me during the visualizing and verbalizing training was the access we had to Gander Publishing. Um, that was a game changer. And I actually asked my district now to purchase it again because you can still do the manipulatives in a safe way. They have the felt on the computer. They have, you know, where you could break down the multi-sentence and, you know, break it down into chunks and, it, it was, it, it took all prep, it took all worries and stress away. It gave me new materials. It was awesome. It was awesome. So that was like a game changer, the Gander Publishing. Because at first they had just kind of sent us PDFs and I was like, oh God, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to chunk it? And, and so that was just awesome. Great. It's great to hear. I'm glad that was, that was useful for you. Very. Um, awesome. All right. Well, thank you all so much for um, taking some time out of your days to join us um, and share a little bit about challenges that you've had and how you've overcome those. Um, I had some really great takeaways from there. I think it was really great to hear uh, how much everyone has changed in terms of their interaction with parents and caregivers and, and how that really informs what they're doing with their students. I think that's fantastic. Um, and I look forward to uh, hearing all as you continue through this school year and, and how your students and who knows, maybe round the team back at the end of the year and talk about what the school year was like. <laughs>
Thank you all for joining us for um, yet another webinar in the yeah, Linamu Bell for Schools Leaders in Literacy webinar series. We hope you found today's um, information valuable, and we look forward to seeing you in several more webinars over the course of this school year. Hope you all have a stay safe and have a wonderful year.